Hello and welcome and welcome to Aiden Eyewitness. It's springtime, the bottoms are out, so it's time for another building boom update. I'm going to take a look at a few of the interesting construction projects around Manchester and a couple in Stockport. I'm experimenting with a shorter format to see if it's possible for me to increase the frequency of updates, which has not been very frequent recently. So, let's go! Los geht's! The first development is just across Princess Road from Alexandra Park. It's called The Depot, and this final phase is a five-storey retirement living development designed by Buttress Architects. It's located on the site of Princess Road Bus Depot, hence the name The Depot. This building was once a tram depot for the old trams. As reported in Place Northwest, the later living block replaces earlier plans for a health pub. It's interesting how, in the changing city, residential units are being built on sites connected with transport, just like the Beetham Tower. The sign says, Homes for every stage of life. New, right-sizing apartments for sale over 55s. One and two bed apartments to buy over 55s. Perfect for right-sizing. And that's a word related to downsizing. What's the difference? Look it up in Wikipedia. Next, we take a look at two of Manchester's newest and most high-profile high-rise developments. They are The Blade and The Cylinder, both designed by Simpson Hall. The sign says, A breathtaking skyscraper at the heart of a vibrant new city centre neighbourhood. On the left is Elizabeth Tower, which I featured in 2020. That's how it looked at the time. The two new towers are located next to the Mancunian Way, between the now mostly completed Elizabeth Tower and the iconic Deansgate Gardens. All these towers were designed by Simpson Hall architects. I featured the construction of the Beetham Tower in the past. Today's towers are of a more interesting design and reach higher into the sky. What we see here are just the lower sections of the towers. Construction still has a long way to go. Not so long ago, buildings on this scale and to this height would have seemed an unlikely scenario in Manchester, but today, tall buildings are appearing all around the central area. Situated next to the highway, there are echoes of North America and even Dubai. All these towers have been built on former industrial sites that served in later years as car parks. Will the height of Manchester's new towers increase further in years to come? Let me know in the comments. And now we move over to the east of Manchester where a remarkable new project is in its early stages of construction. It's Co-op Live, a gigantic concert and events venue that's taking shape next to the City of Manchester Stadium. Again, let me quote from the signs. East Manchester on the world stage, the most environmentally sustainable arena in the UK. For Manchester, for everyone. We can see the nearby gas holders, a reminder of the industrial heritage of this area. Once a place of coal mining and heavy industry, today people come here to watch sports and soon to enjoy massive stadium concerts. More statistics from the displays. 23,500 capacity, the UK's largest, 12 lounges and club spaces. When I look at these visualisations, I see echoes of the Hacienda, but on a much bigger scale. What would the late Manchester music maverick Tony Wilson have thought of all this? The display boards tell the story. 10,500 square meter solar PV roof, 240 covered cycle spaces, 100% rainwater harvesting, zero carbon by 2038, zero waste to landfill, zero food waste. From suffragette city to girl power, we're more than just an arena. Benefits for co-op members. Hmm, Aidan Eyewitness is a co-op member. And it continues. The UK's ultimate live music experience. Quality food, VIP experience, intimate atmosphere, big sound. Opening here soon. Sally can't wait and neither can we. Aidan Eyewitness seconds that emotion. The architects are Populous, a global company specialising in arenas and concert venues. Just a half a mile south along the A6010 at the junction of Gorton Lane is a new project by One Manchester providing affordable housing. Apartments will be offered on a rent-to-buy basis. Houses will be available for shared ownership. The project is split over two sites next to the A6010, Manchester's Eastern Ring Road. This stretch is called Pottery Lane. Architects are OMI. Interesting to see the subtle inclusion of traditional architectural elements, such as sloping roofs. Just opposite is a familiar modern building, 
West Gorton Youth Centre, empty since the new youth centre opened nearby. What new use can be found for this building? Not far from here is the Roundabout in Ardwick, where the A57 and the A6 meet. This building project seems to have been dragging on for years. It stands on the site of the old Stewart's building, which stood empty for many years. The new building echoes the diagonal facades of the old one. In fact, this project stalled. Previous developers went bust, but it was revived by Recom Solutions. It's called the Sona Scheme, and it stands just across from the O2 Apollo. A great place to live if you like concerts, but it's also very well situated for the city centre, the university, and other areas of central Manchester. I've passed it countless times on the 192 bus. About half a mile down the A6 in Longsight, Another large residential building is under construction. It's called Chadwick Place, and it's another project by One Manchester, offering affordable homes. There are one and two bedroomed apartments. It's just across from the site of Daisy Mill, one of the last mill buildings in this part of Manchester. The monolithic structure was demolished around April 2016. Chadwick Place stands on the site of buildings that stood derelict for many, many years. There is a sense that the city region is moving forward and leaving behind the era of dereliction, though much of Manchester's industrial heritage is being lost. 4.7 miles south along the A6 in Stockport Town Centre, work is proceeding on the new bus station. The central core of the apartment block has already reached a considerable height and it's already blocking the view of the viaduct on the left-hand side. Work continues on the foundations across the rest of the bus station site. The controversial tower has not yet appeared in front of the viaduct. This is how the old bus station looked shortly after it closed. So let's enjoy those uninterrupted views of Stockport's magnificent Grade 2 star listed railway viaduct while we can. I think it should be upgraded to Grade 1. 1.4 kilometres to the south of here in Kale Green, an interesting development is taking shape on the site of the former Adwood pub. They have incorporated the Grade 1 listed facade into the new building, which will be a care facility for people with dementia. Local residents objected to the scheme because of a lack of car parking and the cutting down of trees, but planners at Stockport Council saw no reason to disallow the construction of the care home, which will bring employment as well as an important healthcare facility to the area. From nearby Davenport Station, a train will take us to Piccadilly, and a little bit further on, Dale Street, where this new office building caught my eye. It stands on the site of a building that was burned down in 2007. I remember the incident and took photos at the site. This new office building has been sensitively designed by architects Faulkner Chester Hall, with elements of the facade that echo neighbouring buildings. There were favourable comments on the Place Northwest article page, though one person complained, nowhere near tall enough. All new city centre buildings should be towers. Is that right? Should all buildings be towers? Even in the late 19th century Northern Quarter district? Let me know in the comments. People in the Northern Quarter objected to this very tall glass tower which is under construction on the corner of Back Turner Street and Shoot Hill. They said it was starkly out of character with the rest of the Northern Quarter. Some local councillors recommended rejection of the plans. Originally it was going to be an apartment building, but the developers changed the use to workspaces. They have retained the original facade of the glass bottle factory. I'm not sure if this was the choice of the architects or due to pressure by local campaigners. I think it's great to retain elements of an older building, even in a modern building, as with the Adswood Lane facility. The developers are Solboy, the property arm of the billionaire bookmaker Fred Dunn, and the Glassworks project is designed by John Matthews Architects. This is just a small but hopefully representative sample of construction that's going on around Manchester and the city region. I'll be featuring more projects across Manchester, Liverpool and connected cities soon. I hope you found this video interesting, maybe even inspiring. Please like the video, subscribe to the channel, post a comment and click the bell button to receive all notifications because I don't have a fixed upload schedule. Vielen Dank fürs Zuschauen, many thanks for watching, auf Wiedersehen, see you again soon.